it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So today I, um, I had a special request to do Elf on the Shelf really big. And I thought this would look so cute on someone's mantle. Um, and I found this file. So it's on Etsy. It's SVG Alex. I, are, I just bought it. So I'm going to show you how to download it and then upload it into um, Design Space as well. But anyway, this looks great. And the reason why I like it is everything's broken up into little pieces. So we can make this gigantic and it will be seamless and beautiful. So, all right, so I've already bought this. So what you wanna do is, and pretty much, um, I feel like all the sites are very similar, right? Once you purchase something, you need to go to your purchase section or you know to download your files. So in this case on Etsy, it's gonna be under you. And we're gonna go to purchases and download files so you can see i just bought that <laughs> and you want to you want to download if they make um a distinction here you definitely want the svg file because that's going to allow us to cut it into pieces um if you want to just print it whether you're doing you know uh, printable htv or if you want to put it on a card or something i don't know <laughs> stickers there you go then you'll you'll do the png file but let's download the svg file and with SVGs, you can always take it into Design Space, flatten it, and then print it. So I personally um, like to keep track of my SVG files. Okay, so show in folder, because most likely it's going to be zipped. So you want to, oh, it isn't zipped, uh, is it? Okay, interesting. All right, so let's see if we can bring it in. So. Here's design space. Let's go to upload and upload image, browse. So we have it in downloads, I'm sure. Ooh, there it is. <laughs> My contacts today. All right, so let's double click on that. Okay, so here it is. I would change this to elf on a shelf just so that you can find it later. Um, you can put in tags as well so that it the more you do here, the easier it will be for you to find it later. Um, but for me, I know it's like, don't do as I say. Um, as long as my image name is good, then I'll be able to find it later. But anyway, click save. And then click on this to insert your image. All right, so here's our little elf on the shelf and it is an SVG file. You know in a couple, um, the easiest way to tell is over here. You can see your different colors are separated um, into line items, so it means that each one you can cut um, and customize. We can change the colors if we wanted to. Um, this is so cute. You can, e you can even add a name up here if you wanted to, So or up here. Um, what I would probably do so my daughter has two elves on the shelves. Um, I'm gonna have to pick one name. But what I would do is, I know I'm gonna glitter this thing out. So everything's gonna be in glitter cardstock. Um, so I would do the name in HTV up here. So I'm gonna do that actually. So let's do the text. And I'm gonna do, is this a boy or a girl? I'm. I'm gonna do her name is uh, the the elf is Riley, and um, there are a couple of fonts that I really like. So I'm gonna do the popcorn one. So this is on font bundles. I like this one because it's really cute but low maintenance. So it um, and actually I like caps for this font. Um, it cuts well, it weeds well, and it's really legible. So I like it. So I'm going to make this small so that it fits in here for now. And once it fits, you can, you know, when you go to cut this out because they're individual letters, you can place it so it's curved a little bit. All right. So Riley, I'm going to make that into, maybe I'll do it in green. Okay. So here's our little elf. What I love about this file, like I was saying, is everything's broken up. So the hat is one piece. So the hat looks like it's the biggest piece that we have, right? So if we make this 11 inches, 
this is another 11 inches, this is another 11 inches. This guy, this little cutie pie, can be easily 30 inches, 33 inches, maybe even 40 inches. Um, let's just see. So let's select all. Let's make this really big. Let's make it 40 inches and see what we have. Okay, so let's zoom out for a second. And normally I don't check my phone while I'm recording, but my daughter has a babysitter right now, so you will see me occasionally glance down, so I apologize in advance. Okay, so 40 inches, it's 20 inches across. I like it. Let's see how big the individual pieces are. So the way you would do this is you need to, um, oops, we need to ungroup it first and then that will allow us to look at all the dimensions for everything. So let's double check. Um, the face should be fine because, um, okay, so it's, it's not 15 inches across because the two ears will not count in the, in the, the measurement because everything is separated so i think we're good there let's look at this hat um so the red is all together so what we want to do is we want to go to contour and you want to hide all so that we can just isolate this hat okay so let's see how tall the hat is the hat is 10 inches by 12 so i'm just going to move this over for a second so I'm going to try to rotate this to see if I can change the dimensions a little bit. Okay, so that is very, very close. So it went from 10 something, okay, here, let's go back and let's talk about this for a second. So, oops, let's rewind for one second. Okay, so here's our hat, the way um, the designer had it. So it's 10.6 inches across and 12.1 inches down. So the way it's being measured is the 10 inches, 10.6 inches is from the most left to the most right and just the difference between the two. And the height is the top point down to this bottom point. So I want to decrease the height. So I'm going to rotate this to the right a little bit. So you see now the height is not quite as long because this shifted up a little bit. It's not as far down. I'm going to shift it a little bit more because I'm so close. This is now 10.6 by 11.6. So I just need to get it to 11.5, right? I could actually work with this as long as it's under 12. Um, but let's just see if we can rotate it a little bit more. Okay, a little bit more because it's 10.58 now. Oops. Maybe that's too much. Okay, I'm gonna rotate it a little bit more. I'm getting close. Okay, so here is where it doesn't work because now it's 11.6 by 11.5. I need one side, so let's go back to here. Okay, this will work because what will happen is, and I'm gonna delete everything to show you why it's gonna work, okay? So this is more of like just a general tutorial, okay? Um, I'm deleting everything, although I probably shouldn't have done that. But anyway, um, so this is 11.1 .1 by 11.5. It's going to tell you, let's go to make it so you can see what I mean. It's going to require a 12 by 24 mat because it's saying, hey, one side is fine. One side is less than 11 and a half. So that fits into the normal constraints. But uh, this piece, if you remember, it was like 11.5 something. So it's saying, hey, you need 12 by 24 cardstock for this. So we're just gonna say it's okay. You don't have to have it, okay? So what we're gonna do is um, we need to rotate this so that it is definitely under 12. So here's our 12 inch mark, right? So this right here will cut fine. You're going to just put on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. Make sure that you put your 12 by 12. I would move it down like this. I would have the paper touch this 12 line, okay? When you feed it in, because this technically can cut, right? 
design space just says, hey, we only go to 11 and a half, but design space is not gonna know that you fed this piece a 12 by 12 mat with a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. It will cut all the way to this line. So that's how you trick the system, okay? Don't worry that this shows a 12 by 24 mat. You can stick in a 12 by 12 mat, 12 by 12 cardstock, and it will cut all the way to this line. I would, yeah, I would just move, just make sure it doesn't go past the 12 because you're gonna put your 12 by 12 piece of cardstock down. That's it, okay? So let's hit cancel, let's go back, let's bring in our file. We were able to go all the way up to, did we do 40 inches? Gosh, I'm losing my mind. So let's go back to upload. Let's put this back in. I honestly don't remember. So let's, <laughs> let's do this at 40 inches. Do I need to rewind myself? All right. Um, let's double check. Let's ungroup. My goodness. Okay. Well, ungroup. Um, I'll remember as soon as I see the red. So here's the red. Let's go to contour. Hide all. Let's see how long this hat is. Yeah. So this is, so it's 40 inches. So let me save this as elf 40 inches. This is going to look amazing. All right. So it's saved. Let's go back to contour and bring back all the red, right? Okay. If you click hide all, it will give you the option of show all. So we wanna show all. Okay, so we know we are good with this file. So let's start undoing everything, okay? So we've already ungrouped everything. So here is the, um, the little thing that it's sitting on, the shelf I guess it's sitting on, we wanna break this up, right? Because we don't wanna, um, we don't wanna have to use 12 by 24 cardstock. So the easiest way to do this is let's just go to shape, bring in a square, and we're gonna slice this out. So we wanna separate this. When you're slicing things out to separate the pieces, you basically want one piece to be Oh, why is this so slow? Okay, you want one piece to be completely in your shape. So the square, the circle, whatever. The other piece to be completely out of it, okay? So I'm gonna grab these two pieces and slice. So now you have this piece is only 5.3 inches by 1.65, and then you have this one. So when you go to cut this, you can put them right next to each other and save your cardstock, right? Before it was like, what, 18 inches and something? Now you can cut it side by side like this or whatever scrap you have, you can put it right next to each other on the line. So basically that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, move all these pieces out and separate them, okay? So this hat, let's slice out this hat. This is so close together that I'm gonna show you how to separate it not by slicing, but by contouring. Okay, so we're going to separate it by two different ways. Um, I use both whenever I need to. Okay, so slicing up here is easy because the hat is so far up there and I can cover the hat in my um, square. So I'm gonna slice it out. Now, this bottom piece is not as easy to slice out because look at how close this top part is to this little thing. I'm not gonna be able to get a shape where it only covers this piece to slice it out, if that makes sense, okay? So let's just remove all our slice results. I don't know if everyone's just working in design space right now, but it is really slow. Okay, so here's this one piece. We're fine the way it is, don't worry about that. Okay, now let's look at this. When you are separating out um, an image, a file, and it's all close together, count how many pieces you have. So you have one right here, one, two, three, four, five. So if it's in five pieces, it's going to need five copies of this, okay? So here's copy one. We're gonna duplicate two, three, four, and five. So we're going to contour each one of these copies out, okay? So let's look at this first one. Let's go to contour and just click hide all. It will give you this top one that's left. 
so we're good there. We want just this piece. This piece is 10.2 by 8.7, so we can cut that on the Cricut, right? So let's click on the next image, go to Contour. So there's two. There's a few ways to do this. You can click Hide All again. It always leaves the top piece because if it hid everything, your whole piece, your whole image would disappear, right? So when you click Hide All, it's Hide All but one. So we already have this one, so I want this one. I don't want this one, I'm gonna deselect this one. So now all I have left is this little guy, 6.7 by 8.4, perfect. Let's go to the next one, contour. I'm gonna click hide all again, but I already have that piece, right? And I have this piece. Now I want this piece, I'm going to deselect this piece. And you can see over here what's left as well. So there's that piece. And this is 3.6 by 8.2, perfect. Let's go to the next one, let's go to contour. So I'm gonna show you over here now, okay? So let's hide all, it left us this. We already have this piece and we already have this piece. So what we don't have is this piece. So I want this one and I don't want this one. So you can do it either way, but see it left us this piece. All right, and so we're good there. Now we only have one more piece left, so let's go to contour. You can click hide all. We want this piece. Well, sometimes it's hard to select on here. I want this piece. Forget it. I want this piece. I don't want this piece. I definitely like dealing with the panel more. Okay, so our red now is broken out into pieces that we can cut on the Cricut, right? Easy peasy. Here's all our white. Our white is separated enough that we can slice it. I prefer, I think, to slice when both options are available. Um, but that's me, whatever you're used to. And I'm gonna show you also over here. I'm gonna use this same square to slice out all these pieces, okay? So you wanna make sure I'm doing, I don't know, what is that, the sock or the shoe? I'm doing this little piece first, okay? So I'm gonna grab with my mouse all the white and the square, that's two pieces, white and square, and I'm gonna slice. And, okay, so now I'm gonna move my square over here and I'm gonna do this side. Okay, note that my square is touching this piece. I have this still over here. So I'm gonna take my mouse and I'm gonna go down the center. It's gonna be very thin. I'm gonna grab my square, grab my white piece. So even though I'm in the midst of all this traffic, my mouse only picked up the white and the square. So it's still two items and I can slice. Okay, so I'll move this out for now. Get rid of your slice results. We don't need these two pieces, right? So you can grab those two and delete. Uh, it's really slow today. <laughs> All right, so here's my one white piece. I'm moving it out of the way. Here's my other white piece. I'm moving that out of the way. Now I'm left with this, okay? So, and you can move this around, so watch. I'm gonna take the white and I'm gonna do the little hat headband. That's completely covered in my square. So now I'm gonna grab it like this and slice. So you can see there's different ways of doing this, but we want to remove this because we want to be able to, one, cut on the Cricut, and two, be efficient. So when I go to cut all my white pieces, I can jam them all up together and it will cut you know, and it will leave me some scrap that I can save and use for next time. Okay, let's look at this little hat piece. It's 12.3 by 4.9. So it's thin enough that I can rotate this and make sure that it fits on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. So I'm gonna rotate it like this and let's see what my dimensions are now. 10.9 by 10.1, so I can cut it. You don't have to slice it. When I first started doing off the mat projects, if I had seen that, I would have sliced it because I would have thought, I didn't realize how it calculated the dimensions um, and I would have just sliced it. But like this piece, the same piece that we did not change the, um, the size of it at all, like the actual shape, we didn't shrink it or anything. We just rotated the piece until it fit into what the Cricut thinks it can cut. All right, okay, so the eyes, 
I usually keep the eyes together so that I know this circle goes with this piece. Um, so let's do this. So I can see that my square, what's left of my square, completely covers the eyes because it doesn't pop out anywhere. So that means I can use this, go up the middle and slice. And then I can move this side over and slice out this eye over here. And again, I'm not moving this at all. So I'm gonna take my mouse and go up the middle where I just grab the white and the square. So it's still just two items and slice. Okay. And if you wanted to, like you start to get a little lazy, like I am feeling right now, you can slice these two together. They're close enough and we have all these other pieces that we can do. So I'm going to slice it kind of in the middle like this. And I'm gonna go up the middle and slice. So now my white is completely done. I just need to get rid of my slice results. Like I don't need that. I don't need my square anymore. So you can be as efficient as you want to. So I kept these two together. But see, now my collar is out of the way. So my collar, 11.9 by 5.5. Again, I'm going to rotate it. And 10.8 by 7.4. Perfect. Let's see this one. 10.3 by 4 point something. We're good. I'm going to get rid of the slice results here. And we're almost, almost done. We just have the black background left and I think the skin. Oh, and the eyes, okay. So here are the eyes. So on this one, if you didn't wanna slice, you could do this. You could duplicate it and we could contour. So when you go to contour, you can select here. Um, if you wanna see the image, click here where the number is and it will automatically go to 100%. Okay, so on this one, let's get rid of the left. So my right one is left. All right, let's click on this one, contour. I want to get rid of the right one. So you can determine which one you think is easier to do. So there's my the two eyes separated. So instead of using a big piece of blue cardstock, I can put it really close to each other like this. And maybe you already have blue scrap paper. That's three by three and a half. Okay, um, let's look at what's left. Okay. The two little cheeks, how cute is that? Um, I, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm gonna slice real quick because I'm gonna slice out the hair as well. So I'm gonna use the same piece. Here we go. Grab these two items and slice. If you grab more than two items, when you go to slice, it will be grayed out. So you can only, oh, you can only slice two things at one time, okay? So that's the golden rule. If you can't slice something, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time it's user error. <laughs> okay, let's look at the hair. I know the hair, oops, I'm gonna put this aside for a minute. I'm gonna grab the hair. Okay, and let's slice out the hair, okay? So here we go, I'm using the same square. I'm gonna go down right here, grab the brown and the square and slice. I'm gonna do that over here. And again, I'm in a lot of traffic right here. I'm gonna just gonna grab the brown and the square and slice. Okay, so now my brown is all good. I'm just gonna get rid of the slice results. And delete okay now this I can do I just want to make sure that I'm gonna rotate it a little bit okay I'm gonna see if I can slice this and I can't I picked up too many pieces so it's grayed out you see that so um, I'm actually gonna move this over and I grab what's oh see the eye came with it that's why okay so I'm gonna move this to the side okay um let's see if I can slice out the ear okay so I want 
the ear to be completely in here. And then there's the face. So slice, and then that looks good. Let's get, so now it's 13.3, but it should be fine because we're gonna get this ear out of the way. Let's get this ear up here. Oops. Okay. Let's get it right. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. So we could at this point contour. So let's break it up into three pieces. Okay. So here's our three pieces. Let's go to contour and hide all gonna leave us the face but I want the ear I don't want the face so here's my lovely ear by itself where is my ear oh my ear is over here okay now I want the little neck so I'm gonna to go to contour hide all I want this piece I don't want the face so there's my chin or my neck just gonna move it over here for a second. Now I have the face left, right? So I'm gonna go to contour. I don't want, so I'm gonna click on 100%. I don't want the ear, I don't want this, but I do want the face. Now, because we're gonna be slicing all of this out here, this face, I'm, okay, wait, first, sorry. Let's get rid of all our slice results. So let's get rid of the square. And we're almost done. All we have left is the black background, right? But I have one more trick to show you on the face. So here's the face. I'm gonna duplicate it. And then I'm gonna change it to black. And go to contour. And anything that is enclosed, I want, so I'm gonna click hide all. And you see what happens is all these little pieces are now gone. So I have a solid face, right? The reason why I want that is because we're gonna be slicing this image. This image right now is almost 20 inches by 40 inches. Obviously we can't cut it. We're gonna be slicing it into pieces that the Cricut can cut, right? So there may be seams slicing down the face. So what I wanna do is basically, I'm gonna bring this arrange, send it to the back. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out this black piece so that it goes, we're gonna put the face on top of the black piece like this, and we're gonna tape it together. So if there were seams coming down this eye or the cheeks, um, even though we, you have the little blue and the white piece, there's still a lot of open space for us to see the seams, right? But now, I have this little black piece. It's gonna sit on top of my seams right here. So it's gonna look seamless. So actually what I wanna do is later when we go to slice this up, I am going to want to slice, if I can, either somewhere down here. I don't wanna slice through this eye because this eye is open. I'm gonna see that seam, but I wanna slice this down anywhere right here because these seams will be covered and the hair this hair will cover most of the seams, right? So if I had something cut down right here, it would look almost seamless. You would only have like, what, less than a quarter of an inch of a seam right here that you won't even notice, right? All of this will be seamless. All this black will be covered, okay? So just something to keep in mind when we go to slice this. All right, so we are almost done. The only thing we have left is our black background. So let's move our black background. Hold on, I'm gonna give us a clean space over here. And move it over here so my face isn't in the way. <laughs> All right, so this is 20 inches by 40 inches. Again, obviously too big for us to cut, right, on our Cricut. So let's bring in a square. We're gonna slice this up. So it's 20 by 40. So we obviously, let's make this 11 inches by 11. Technically you can cut 11 and a half by 11 and a half, but I don't like dealing with half inches. Either way in this case, because it's 20 inches wide, you're gonna need two columns 
of your black cardstock because 11 and a half by plus 11 and a half is 23 inches or 11 plus 11 is 22 inches. Either way, you need two columns, right? So let's put that here and let's go to our position feature. We're gonna to round to the nearest whole number. So 30.22 is gonna become 30 and 35.6 is gonna become 36. So what we're telling design space is your X coordinate is the one running across. Go over 30 inches or 30 units, go down 36. And remember, because we scrolled down so much, right? That's why it's at 36, you see? Go down to 36 and you have the start of your square. So we're gonna duplicate this one and we're gonna put this one really close to this one. We're basically build, building our grid of flushed squares to slice this little elf, okay? So if you put it close enough, you just round. 41.2 becomes 41, it's already at 36. So I'm gonna show you the math behind it. This starts at 30, right? And our cardstock is 11 inches. So 30 plus 11 is 41, and this starts at 41. So that's how I know they're flushed, okay? Hit your shift key, grab both squares, and we're just gonna duplicate. Because we already have a set of flush squares, now we have another set of flush squares that we're gonna put up here really close so that this will be flushed with this. So now 29.9 becomes 30, 47.3 becomes 47. The same way that we know that this worked earlier is we'll go back to this square. This square is it starts at 36, right? It starts at 36. 36 plus 11 is 47. And there's 47. So that's how you know. So now we have four squares completely flushed, right? So hit your shift key and grab all four squares on your panel right here. So there, it's dark, it's selected, right? So you know these four squares are selected. Duplicate. And we're going to make those four flushed with the top four. So Sorry, here we go. Put it really, really close. And this 29.8 becomes 30, 58.3 becomes 58. We now have eight squares completely flushed with each other. And let me just scroll down so you can see a little bit. Okay, so now what you wanna do is go over to your panel, scroll all the way down so that we can get our elf. And then we're going to arrange send to the front, and now we're gonna kinda zoom in to see where we're slicing this little guy. This is what you don't want. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see because I'm having problems seeing. <laughs> so let me scroll in. We, Our goal right now is we have eight squares, right? So we want eight sizable pieces. What you don't want is something like this where we slice it and there's like a little tip of the hat. I don't want to be um, responsible for little pieces. I want this to cut into big pieces, okay? So this is what we're doing is right now, what we're checking for is where are all the cuts gonna be? Where are the seams, okay? So let's do some, let's look at this. So this little piece is small, but sometimes it is what it is, right? So this is where it's gonna slice. Let's look, okay, we don't want this because look at the ear. I don't want to be responsible for that little ear. So let's see, something like this. So I'm gonna scroll back up and see, okay, so the hat is in a couple pieces. I'm gonna, we'll look at that in a second. Let's look at everything else to make sure it looks good. Okay, everything else looks good, so let's zoom out for a second. Okay, so let's look at this guy. I'm almost tempted to do something like this. Bring it down. Okay, and let's, maybe something like this. Let's zoom in for a second. Okay, so we have one big piece here, one big piece here. This is all looking good to me so far. This is looking good. But see this hat, we don't have to slice it into two. What we can do is we can get rid of this square, take this square and move it over. This is another reason why I like rounding to the nearest whole number because now when I move this to make this flushed, 
I can just round. If I didn't round it earlier, what would happen is I would be trying to get 36.889 and trying to get it to the right spot. I don't want that. So if you have everything be, um, being whole numbers, we can easily figure out how to make this square flushed with this one, okay? All right, so now we have the hat is one piece, this tip is one piece, great. Everything else is pretty much big pieces. I think we're ready to slice this. So I'm gonna zoom back out really quickly and then we're gonna slice this one square at a time, okay? So let's slice out the hat. So now remember our, our elf is 40 inches by 20 inches. We are now slicing him to pieces that we can cut. The hat is now, let's see how big this hat is, 8.4 by 8.4. It's pretty big, <laughs> I mean, this elf is big. All right, so let's slice, let's go down this side and start slicing one square at a time. It's gonna look so, so good. Uh, what just happened here? Okay, <laughs> let's go all the way around and we're just slicing our way around this elf. Because the black is just an outline. So that's where all your seams are gonna be. Everything else is seamless. So like all the red pieces, all the white pieces, um, it's all seamless, so it's gonna look amazing when you piece this together. All right, so I think we've sliced everything out. What I like to do is I do like to move all my pieces over to make sure that one, it all sliced properly. And I do this so that later when I go to piece this together, I know exactly which side is up um, and which way it goes, so. Because sometimes with you know with the black it's hard to tell top side from bottom side so if I flip something and then I'm trying to piece it together it just wastes my time so and if you follow me you know I'm really bad at puzzles so this helps me piece my my puzzle back together all right so there's my elf in seven big pieces I love it all my slice results I can grab it and delete. And now let's go to the Make It screen so I can show you what everything looks like. And I think I will make this one because I think my daughter is gonna love it. Okay, it's saying you need to use a 12 by 24 mat. Don't worry if you don't have one, just click OK and I'll show you what I mean. Because these pieces right here, like it's going past the 12, right? But if you rotate it, it won't go past the 12. See, now this is fine. We'll move this out of the way for now. Let's move the other pieces up so that you can fill in. Oh, see, this is why you wanna separate them, right? Because look at this. Now I can't cut it like this. If it was separated, I could have put this mitt right here and it would have been fine. But let's see all our other pieces. Maybe we can um, get everything else here. So like the eyes. crown is too big or whatever that is his collar oh man come on design space grab that piece okay here we go so this can go here this can go up here and make sure nothing overlaps because it will cut into your piece and you don't you definitely don't want that Okay, this eye can go up here. Obviously this now needs to be somewhere else because we didn't separate it, right? So what you can do is, if you don't have a 12 by 24 mat, I would move this to another page. If you do have a 12 by 24 mat, you could always just use the bottom of your mat. So put a 12 by 12 piece of white cardstock up here, 12 by 12 piece of cardstock down here. And, and let's rotate this a little bit more. So you could do something like this. This will now cut perfectly, right? If you had two 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock, only if you have a 12 by 24 mat. If you don't have a 12 by 24 mat, this is what you do. You click this, go to the three dots, move object, and you're gonna create a new mat. So you're gonna say new, give me a white. This is my white colors. 
So here is, oh my gosh, don't do this to me. All right, it's acting up right now, but this, see, we created a new mat. There's your white. We also need to move this guy, right? So let's go down to here, click this one, click the three dots, move object. And we want to create, um, well, let's see. I think it fit in this one, right? Let's see if that helps us with our glitch. Um, it doesn't, okay. So move object, let's just create a new mat. Because it's too wide, it's thinking it needs a 12 by 24 mat, so it won't let you go on here. So let's click on new. Here's my white, and it's gonna give you a 12 by 24 mat. It's not a big deal. If you only put 12 by 12 cardstock and it fits up here, which it does, we know it does, right? It will cut with a 12 by 12 mat. Okay, so this is fine. You know what we should do? We should move this guy. So click on this. Oh, click on the three dots, move object. Let's move it with the, um, the collar. So we're gonna put it with this. And we're gonna make sure it's all on a, in the 12 by 12 space. See, this is why you wanna slice these two guys out because we could have put it up here, but now you kind of have wasted space. But that's just me, personal preference. All right, so here's our black. These are big pieces. I don't think that we can consolidate any of these. Um, yeah, they're just big pieces, nothing that we can do. Here's our red. So same thing with the red. We can rotate this hat a little bit. Oh, I think I rotated it too much. Make sure it fits in the... Okay, so this, this you can cut even though it's past the 11 and a half mark. Just put your 12 by 12 cardstock down to the edge and it will cut this piece. Here's our other red. So again, if you don't have a 12 by 24 mat, I would move this. If you have a 12 by 24 mat, I would put a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock up here and a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock down here and have it cut like that. Okay. Oh, but there's more pieces. Wait a minute. I want to I want to consolidate. Let's see what we have. Yeah, these will fit in the other places. So let's click on this. We're being efficient right now. So let's move these guys over. I'm gonna move this one down here. Come on. Right? And then I'm gonna try to squeeze these two in up here. You see that? So we don't need to do that right now. I just wanna show you because I'm not ready to make it. All right, here's our two cheeks, perfect. Here's the face. The face, you could even I wonder if these will fit in here. Okay. Um, you could do this because if you wanted to, you could save this as scrap for next time and it's a nice chunk, right? It's like three and a half by 12 inches. You can cut a lot of things with that if, if you wanted to. All right, here's our other piece. Um, all right, our blues. That looks, I mean, unless you have a strip of blue like this that fits your scrap, I would probably do something like this. So that's a three by four piece of cardstock. Okay, here's my white. That one ended up being blank, so don't cut anything. And that's it. This is gonna look beautiful. And I forgot, so let's cancel out of this. I forgot that we were doing the name. So all you need to do is, if you remember, I was gonna put the name where the white brim of the hat is. So here's my little white piece. This will be, this will serve as my measurement for my letters. So I'm gonna rotate it over. Okay, I'm gonna go to text and uh, yep, yeah, still happy popcorn. So I'm gonna do Riley and I'm gonna do it in green and I'm gonna use probably glitter HTV. I'm gonna iron it onto this white. It's gonna pop, it's gonna be so, so pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna make this bigger. Did I leave off the E? What happened here? All right, 
So let me move the name. Oh my goodness. Thank goodness we're almost done. Thank you for following along. <laughs> I know it was slow today. All right, so let me grab the name so I can move it and, and resize it. It's really not letting me resize it right now, but I would move it over here to make it, you know, to size it properly, and then I would cut it. And that's it. So I'm gonna save it now. Hopefully it's not going to delete my project like it does sometimes. So I've seen a lot of people post as well about that. Um, so far, anytime that my project disappears, the next day when I go to log in, it's a saved project. So don't fret unless, of course, you need to have it done right away because then I've yet to be able to um, like reboot it and it, for it to come up. It's always been like hours before it's available again. All right, I'm just gonna try really quickly to see if I can move this. Okay, oh there, it's letting me move it. So I'm gonna move it over here. And my Y is definitely missing from this. So I wanna make this smaller. There, I think that will fit the whole name. Oh my gosh, there, yeah. So that looks good. I would add the Y, of course. <laughs> And on this one, because it's a short name and I'm only doing this one thing, I'm actually not gonna weld it. I'm gonna let it cut individually because I'm gonna be placing it individually onto the hat to make it round. Um, so let me save this again. And that's it. So please post your comments here. Let me know what you think. If you have questions, if you would have done something differently, I you know, I love hearing how you guys do things because I feel like that collaboration makes us all better crafters. So maybe I don't love your entire idea as is, but if I took even 10% of it to help make my process better, we all learn together. So I love that whole collaboration. So I don't get offended if you tell me that was the dumbest way to do it. This is how I would do it. I, I'm good. <laughs> so anyway, um, special requests, post them here as well. But if you need to send me like a, a file or whatever, you can send it to Ann, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com. And I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much.